Hi, I'm Dr. Umera Begum, Assistant Professor in Biochemistry. In this lecture, we are going to see about carnitine shuttle mechanism, a crucial step in the beta oxidation of fatty acids, which is required for the energy production in cells. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to recall the structure and functions of carnitine, its role in the beta oxidation of fatty acids, the steps involved in the carnitine shuttle mechanism along with the enzymes involved and also you will be able to predict the metabolic changes due to carnitine deficiency and its management. A carnitine is a protein whose chemical name is beta hydroxy trimethyl ammonium butyrate. This is required for the transport of long chain fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix. Carnitine is provided by the diet or it is synthesized in the cells from amino acids lysine and methionine in liver and kidney. Carnitine is concentrated in tissues like skeletal and cardiac muscles. As already told, the main function of carnitine protein is to transport long chain fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix which is required for subsequent beta oxidation and to provide energy. So the carnitine shuttle mechanism as already informed is required for the transport of long chain fatty acids from the cytosol. Why is it so? Because fatty acids are synthesized in the cytosol and it is available there. But the beta oxidation can take place only in the mitochondria where the enzymes required for beta oxidation is located. So this fatty acid has to get transported from the cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix. But very short chain fatty acids as well as medium chain fatty acids does not find any difficulties in getting transported across the mitochondrial membrane and hence they can be easily transported into the matrix and gets oxidized. The problem comes when the fatty acids are long chain or very long chain. They cannot get transported into the mitochondrial matrix because the membranes will not allow them to enter as they are impermeable to them. So how can these long chain fatty acids enter into the mitochondrial matrix? Now comes the role of our carnitine transporter protein. So this carnitine shuttle mechanism involves three enzymes which helps in the transportation process. Those enzymes are carnitine acyl or palmitoyl transferase 1 which is located in the outer mitochondrial membrane, carnitine acyl or palmitoyl transferase 2 which is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane and also carnitine acyl carnitine translocase also located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So these are the steps involved in the carnitine shuttle mechanism at the end of which the acyl-CoA which is present in the cytosol get transported across the membrane of the mitochondria into the mitochondrial matrix. So here we can see the fatty acid, free fatty acid has to get first activated into acyl-CoA. This takes place in the cytosol by the enzyme acyl-CoA synthetase. So this acyl-CoA if they are from short chain fatty acids and medium chain fatty acid can cross across the membranes, the outer mitochondrial membrane and the inner mitochondrial membrane into the mitochondrial matrix and get oxidized in a subsequent process. The problem comes if this acyl-CoA is from very long chain fatty acids or long chain fatty acids. So this acyl-CoA now takes the help of carnitine shuttle mechanism which involves these three enzymes CPT1. CPT2 and the translocase enzyme. So first what happens? This acyl-CoA combines with carnitine which is a protein which is the transporter protein located in the cytosol. So this acyl-CoA combines with carnitine to, and gets converted into acyl-carnitine. This acyl-carnitine with the help of the translocase enzymes get translocated into the mitochondrial matrix. But we require acyl-CoA and not acyl-carnitine. So this acyl-carnitine has to once again get converted into acyl-CoA for which the second enzyme that is CPT transferase 2 will come into role. So acyl-carnitine combines with coenzyme A so that you get back your acyl-CoA and carnitine is released which finds its way back into the cytosol by the same enzyme translocase. So translocase functions in a coupling process where for every one acyl carnitine entering into the mitochondrial matrix, one carnitine which is released during the second step will enter into the cytosol.
So, ultimately we can see that acyl CoA is present in the mitochondrial matrix now which is now ready for the subsequent beta oxidation process by, where, by which the enzyme can be subsequently we can see that acyl CoA has now entered into the mitochondrial matrix which is now ready for subsequent beta oxidation process and hence energy can be produced for the cells. What will happen if this carnitine transporter is deficient? As already said the long chain fatty acid cannot be metabolized in the absence of carnitine because this helps in the transportation process and that can result in severe hypoglycemia, even coma and sometimes it can be proved to be very fatal. There are secondary reasons for carnitine deficiency, some of them includes liver diseases, malnutrition, severe infections, burns, trauma and also even during hemodialysis process there can be carnitine deficiency as it can be removed from the blood. The treatment is not complete but it, it can be managed to some extent by avoiding prolonged fasting and also adopting a diet which can be high in carbohydrates and medium chain fatty acids instead of long chain fatty acids. So to conclude we have seen in this lecture that fatty acids which are activated in the cytoplasm can enter into the mitochondrial matrix with the help of this carnitine shuttle mechanism which involves three enzymes CPT1, CPT2 and translocase through which this acyl CoA finds its way into the mitochondrial matrix and that can be used for further beta oxidation and energy production in the cells and also we have seen about the deficiency and its treatment process. So these are the frequently asked questions regarding this particular topic and the references which was used to prepare this lecture are these, the web sources as well as the books. So thank you.